Let's talk about the force board lab. You're probably going to do this on maybe a smooth kitchen table. I'm using my whiteboard. This is the suction cup. And when you put it on the surface, you snap it into place with this lever and it stays there. As long as the surface is clean and doesn't have any dust and dirt on it, it should hold. Okay, here's one of the spring scales. One side reads grams and the other side reads newtons. I want you to use it so you can read the newtons. And you see there's a plastic plunger that comes down through here. And you gotta make sure that it's not catching. If I, if I rotate the hook a little bit, it really binds up. You wanna let that thing move freely. You don't wanna twist up the spring scale. So that's why we're gonna be using the paper clips on the end of the ring to give it a little more freedom of movement. Always make sure that the scale is reading zero by turning this knob up at the top, up or down, you can raise or lower this. And do not pull too hard. If you pull too hard on this thing, you'll bust it out the bottom. The thing is going to break. It's not going to be the same. You overstretch the spring. I got plenty of these that are already broken. I don't need any more. We'll attach the red spring scale down at the bottom. If you're using a table, you're going to want to use one of these clamps to go over the edge. And you can see how I've got it clamped to the easel. Same kind of idea, clamping it to a table. Don't clamp the metal handle onto the surface of the table or you're going to get it scratched up. Okay, we've just set everything up at just random angles. Now, doing it on your kitchen table, the first thing you're going to want to do is slide a sheet of paper under there to record your data. Well, I got a whiteboard, so I'm not going to use the paper. I'm going to mark the center of the ring, and then I'm going to mark underneath where each spring scale is pulling from, right here. Now that dot might look like it's off a little bit. That's the camera angle. It actually is straight in the hole. Then I'm going to write down the force value on each one. This one's pulling at 3.8. This one's pulling at 2.3. And this one, and the last one's about 3.9 Newtons. I'm not 100% sure on this one because somebody broke this spring scale. I had to recalibrate it because the spring was over, overly stretched. Now we would take the paper out from underneath the spring scales, but in my case, I'll take the spring scales off the board. Now I'll use my meter stick to trace out the lines. And the last one. I'm going to set a scale. Every Newton on the spring scale will be represented by six centimeters on the board. Boy, this one worked out real close to the original length of the line I drew just by luck. Uh, that works out to be 22.8 centimeters. This one worked out to be 13.8 centimeters. So uh, the line I drew was a little long. And the last line turns out to be 23.4, which is right here. Well, now I have all three force vectors drawn out to scale, tail to tail. I put in an x-axis and the y-axis. I can always check to make sure they're perpendicular with a sheet of paper, nice and square. And now we can measure the angles from the x and y-axis using the compass. We're not using north, south, east, and west. We're not using compass bearings, x and y axes. I got 32, 30, and 17 degrees. Now, now I'm going to list the three force vectors. Force vector one, we all say is 3.8 newtons, 32 degrees, counterclockwise from the positive x axis. Force vector number two, that's going to be 2.3 newtons, 30 degrees clockwise from the negative x. And force vector number three, 3.9 newtons, 17 degrees clockwise from the negative y. Now we're going to find the resultant mathematically. We'll break all the vectors up into x and y components, x1, y1, just like we did with the orienteering lab. And we get 3.22 newtons and 2.01 newtons. And we get 1.99 newtons and 1.15 newtons for the x and y for the second vector.
And the last vector, I get an x of 1.14 newtons going to the left. We have a y going down of 3.73 newtons. Next step, add all the x's, add all the y's. Well, I'm going to show that over here because this diagram is going to get awful crowded. It turns out that the sum of the x's is 0.09 positive, that's to the right. The sum of the y's is negative 0.57 newtons, that's down. So these are the components of the resultant. And now the last step to use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude and inverse tangent to get the angle. And that's the magnitude and direction of my resultant vector. Now I've put that resultant over here to keep this clean. And it's not even drawn to scale over here. The next part, we're going to want to put these vectors tip to tail so we can find the resultant graphically. Now, I'm going to put that data all in the spreadsheet. What's interesting here is that that resultant has a very small magnitude compared to the magnitudes of my individual vectors. I'm starting to see a trend on the spreadsheet. 